Hi, my name is Mr. D, and today I want to take a look at a coordinate geometry proof. So we have given quadrilateral MATH has vertices M negative 5, 6, A 6, 6, T 8, negative 3, and H negative 3, negative 3. We need to prove that MATH is a parallelogram, but not a rhombus. So the first thing we should do with this problem is plot all of the points that we were given and connect them so we get a visual of what our quadrilateral looks like. And the strategy that we're going to use is we're going to show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. That is, we want to show that the opposite sides are equal in length. And then we could use the theorem, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we could start off by finding the length of side MH. So we could write down, we have the coordinates for M are negative 5, 6, and we have the coordinates for h are negative 3, negative 3. And when you're, when you're using the distance formula, it's usually a good idea to label your points. So we could call the first point our x1, y1, and the second point our x2, y2. So now to find the length of mh, we have mh equals, and we're looking at the square root of x2 minus x1 squared. So we're doing, for x2, we're substituting negative 3. And now we have minus x1, which is negative 5. And we're squaring this quantity. And now we're going to add to it. We have y2 minus y1, so we're subtracting negative 3 minus positive 6 and we're also squaring this quantity. So for the next line, we have mh equals the square root of, and we're looking at negative 3 minus negative 5 turns into negative 3 plus 5, and negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. So we have positive 2 squared plus, and now negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. And we're squaring this quantity as well. So we have mh equals, and now positive 2 squared is equal to positive 4, and negative 9 squared is equal to positive 81. Remember, when we multiply two negatives, the result is positive. So we have mh equals the square root of 85. So what we could do is we just found mh is equal to square root 85, so we could label this on our diagram. And now next we could find the length of at, so we're going to use the coordinates we have for a. a is the point 6, 6, and t is the point 8, negative 3. So for this new example of finding the length of AT, we could once again label these coordinates as our x1, y1, and x2, y2. So we'll call A our x1, y1, and T can be our x2, y2. So the length of AT, we have AT equals the square root of, and we're doing x2 minus x1. So we could write 8 minus 6 squared plus, and now y2 minus y1, we're writing negative 3 minus 6 squared. So at equals, and now 8 minus 6 is positive 2, so we have positive 2 squared plus negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9, and we're squaring this. But notice that for the previous example, we had 2 squared plus negative 9 squared. So we could go ahead and assume that when we simplify this, we're going to have 4 plus 81, which is 85. So the length of AT is equal to the square root of 85. And what this tells us once we label, so far with this quadrilateral, we have one pair of opposite sides being congruent. So all we need to do now is show that the other pair of opposite sides are also congruent. So we're going to use the distance formula twice 
two more times to show that MA equals HT. So the coordinates for M and A, we have negative 5, 6, and 6, 6. So from M to A, we have M is negative 5, 6, and A is 6, 6. And once again, to stay organized, what we could do is we could label everything that we have. We have, for the first point, we could call it our x1, y1. And our second point could be our x2, y2. So this tells us that MA is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 gives us 6 minus negative 5. And we're squaring this, and we're adding y2 minus y1. So we have 6 minus 6, and we're squaring this. So ma equals the square root of 6 minus negative 5 turns, in, turns into 6 plus 5, which gives us 11 squared, plus 6 minus 6 is 0, so we have 0 squared. And now ma equals... The square root of 11 squared is 121, 0 squared is 0. So all we're finding is the square root of 121, which is equal to 11. So MA is equal to 11. And now the last thing that we need to do is find the length of HT, and then we could write our formal proof. So we're using the coordinates 8, negative 3, and negative 3, negative 3. So for H... We have negative 3, negative 3. And for t, we have 8, negative 3. And once again, we could label h as our x1, y1, and t as our x2, y2. Now, one thing you'll observe is that ma and ht are both horizontal lines. So technically, we could just count the units across. But when you're doing a proof, it's usually a good idea to be formal and to use equations so that there's no room for doubt. So this tells us that we're writing HT equals, and we have the square root of, we're doing X2 minus X1. So we have 8 minus negative 3 squared plus, and now Y2 minus Y1, we're writing negative 3 minus, and our Y1 is negative 3. And we're squaring this quantity as well. So HT equals the square root of 8 minus negative 3 turns into 8 plus 3. And we have 11 squared plus negative 3 minus negative 3 turns into negative 3 plus 3. And notice that negative 3 plus 3 works out to 0 squared. So once again, we have the same thing for MA and HT, so for the next line, we could just write that HT is equal to 11, because we know that 11 squared is 121, and we're finding the square root of 121, which will give us 11. So now we have enough information to complete this proof. We just found that HT has a length of 11, so we just showed the existence of two pairs of congruent opposite sides. Or let me say that a little bit better. We just showed that both pairs of opposite sides in this quadrilateral are congruent. So to write our formal proof, we're going to say that line segment MH is congruent to line segment AT. So line segment MH is congruent to line segment AT. And in the same statement, we could say line segment MA is congruent to line segment HT because we just show that they are equal in length. So the reason we have this is true because the line segments have equal length. So what this tells us now we could say that since both pairs
of opposite sides are congruent. This tells us that MATH is a parallelogram. But now let's remember we're not done with this proof because we also need to show that MATH is not a rhombus. So what we need to observe is notice that all four sides of this quadrilateral are not equal in length. And by definition, a rhombus has four equal sides. So to say it formally that MATH is not a rhombus, all we need to say is that MATH is not a rhombus because All four sides are not equal in length. That is, since we show that all four sides are not equal in length, we can conclude that meth or MATH is not a rhombus. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this proof on showing MATH is a parallelogram but not a rhombus. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this video was helpful.